What's up, guys? We are going into another tier list. This time, we're ranking the most overrated fighters in MMA. Most of them are going to be UFC fighters. The guys in the S tier are the most overrated fighters, in my opinion. Everybody on this list will be overrated, so the D tier will seem kind of useless by the time that this video is wrapped up because I'm only going to go over guys that I think are overrated. And without further ado, we're going to start right now with no other than the notorious Conor McGregor. A lot of people would be divided on this one. Some people think that Conor McGregor gets too much shit. He's only lost to the best of the best. Dustin Poirier, who has one of the best resumes ever in the lightweight division, who may be the best striker the lightweight division's ever seen if you're looking at it from a longevity standpoint because he's been so successful throughout his entire career at lightweight and he's beat so many guys with his striking, whereas Conor's only beat Eddie Alvarez in the lightweight division. And he's only lost to Habib other than that, especially at lightweight, who is the greatest of all time. Of course, he lost in a Diaz, but I thought that that was a bit of a premature decision to move up a weight class. He was undersized. He took it on short notice because, you know, I think RDA pulled out and he was undersized. He gassed out. He underestimated the toughness of Nate Diaz, but he really hasn't lost to anyone else. That being said, Conor McGregor is not a dedicated fighter, and this is not ranking Conor McGregor as an overrated fighter in regards to his whole career, I just think that he's overrated today. We're talking about the Conor McGregor of 2023. Who is he today? He's a guy that spends the majority of his time vacationing, sparring with cardio kickboxers who are getting off of work at 5 p.m. He's smoking big blunts and drinking whiskey. He's on his Lamborghini yacht, going to Marbella, Spain, going to Ibiza, wherever he goes, Portugal, to hang out with his family probably homeschools his kid, which is probably a good decision. But let's be honest, guys, he's not a hungry fighter. And with every year that passes, take into account all the injuries that he has, he's only getting worse and he's getting older too. And he can take all the gear that he wants. It's not going to improve his skill set. It's just going to make him more stiff. And the Connor that I've seen last time was worse than the Connor I saw in 2020. And the Connor I saw in 2020 was worse than the Connor I saw in 2017, 2016, 2015. He's just getting worse and people act like he can beat ranked guys. The only ranked guy I think Connor has a chance with is Dan Hooker. And even that may be pushing it because Dan Hooker's still hungrier than Connor McGregor. Connor McGregor's waking up in silk sheets. You think this guy is pushing himself against killers in the gym? You think he's humbling himself against guys that actually want to fight or want to push him? No, he's going with yes men. He's going with guys to make him feel good, the cardio kickboxers. And I just understand that people act like Connor's completely washed and he would lose to a bum on the street. Those are just haters. You know, those are the casuals, the haters. Of course, there's some casuals that try to be a contrarian and say he could still beat guys in the top five. He would smoke this guy, smoke that guy, smoke this guy, smoke that guy. Like, take it easy. He's not the same Connor. And people speak of him as if he hasn't changed, as if age doesn't exist, as if injuries don't exist. I think after that first round, if I were to tell you Connor McGregor comes back to fight a ranked opponent, and the fight's going to go past the second round. Who do you have your money on? It's probably not going to be the guy named Conor McGregor. He wilts under pressure. He's not tough when the going gets tough. So Conor McGregor is at B tier. People act like he can come back and smoke a Jorge Masvidal or, you know, have a chance with Justin Gagey. I mean, listen, after that first round, he's fucked. So I think he's overrated. Some of his fans still think that he has a chance to beat ranked guys. I don't think so. Next up. Israel Adesanya, Dan Hardy went on record saying, you know, he's setting up traps. By the time you figured out one of his traps, he's already set up the 20th. And then you're just, you're just behind. He's scrambling your brain. He's throwing leg kicks. He's throwing leg kicks at range and a couple of jabs per round. The only thing that gives him that record, that beautiful record. I mean, let's be honest. He's four finishes in his entire UFC career. Four fucking finishes. The style bender. Most of his decision wins are razor close <laughs> if you look at the stats he's got a long lanky frame with a long reach he's hard to hit boom you figured it out mr Stylebender, the last avatar he's setting up traps joe rogan will say he's he's just fucks with guys brains he just can't comprehend the level of skill that he has <laughs> leg kicks and jabs you're overrated. And he takes on anyone that's his size, he loses. And Jan Blahovic is a great striker. Phenomenal striker. Some of the best leg kicks in the game, if not the best. 
was able to take out Israel Adesanya, who had a way more extensive kickboxing career. Neutralized him, checked his leg kicks, outstruck him for three rounds. People still don't give him credit for that. And he got out leg kicked by Alex Pereira and knocked out. A lot of people going into that fight said, look at the kickboxing fights. He's just a way better fighter until he gets KO'd every time. Come on, guys. He's overrated. Robert Whitaker beat him. He had a razor close fight with Jared Cannonier. Hell, look at Robert Whitaker's performance against Marvin Vittori and then look at Israel Adesanya's performance against Marvin Mediocre Vittori. All right? He's overrated as fuck. Okay? He's overrated as fuck. The style bender, Israel Adesanya, one of the best strikers. I'm gonna knock him out. No, you're not, dog. You have four finishes, bro. Next up, Nate Diaz. <laughs> he's at the beat tier with Connor because people are divided on this one. Some people like me think he's dog shit. Think he's old. He's a washed up. What? He, he's he's basically human scar tissue at this point he's human scar tissue tony ferguson is the bodiless shell of mr Krabs, and he was winning rounds against nate diaz so nate diaz is losing rounds to the bodiless shell of mr Krabs. that shot he landed on leon edwards was one in a billion okay that doesn't happen every time he fights leon edwards should have finished nate diaz it's pathetic that he didn't that's actually a bad look on leon edwards which is probably why he's not going to be a champion for very long. I don't think he defends that belt. <laughs> Even if he fights Usman, he might not defend that belt. But, guys, Nate Diaz, I'm tired of the Diaz army. You know, guys in their mid-30s wearing their fucking checkered shirts with their sunglasses on and their bandanas. They think they're tough guys. I'm a Nate Diaz guy. I'm a Nate Diaz guy. You know, they, they, they build their whole personality off of someone that they've never met in Nate Diaz. They think that Nate Diaz is tough. I can relate to him. I'm tough. No, guys, Nate Diaz sucks, okay? People act like Nate Diaz that shows up today is the Nate Diaz that showed up against Conor McGregor back in 2016. He's the Nate Diaz that was beating up Michael Johnson in 2015, that Nate Diaz is pretty fucking slick. He has good boxing, great jujitsu. I'll give it to him, but he's a pipsqueak, soy boy, pipsqueak eating tofu. All right, he doesn't even eat meat. I think he eats fish, but fish has heavy metals in it and lead. It's not one of the healthiest foods to eat. And I don't even think if he's, I don't even think he's that based on nutrition. He's a pipsqueak, soy boy, tofu eating, forty year old man. And I like him. I like Nate Diaz, but I just can't stand how people were picking him to beat Hamza Chamayev. And <laughs> Leon Edwards. Like, when he fought Hamza, I had tons of people commenting in my in the TikToks when I was saying Nate Diaz had a better chance of becoming the president of the United States than he does beating Hamza Chamayev. And people were calling me a casual. People were saying, bro, he's going to wrap him up, bro. Watch. He's going to wrap him up, bro, Nate Diaz. When he latches on, it's all over. Like, there's no chance he's going to submit a guy like Hamza Chemaev. Thank God that fight didn't happen. Otherwise, Hamza probably would have went to jail. <laughs> I mean, guys, Nate Diaz is not very good. We're talking about the 2023 version of Nate Diaz. People still give him a chance to beat Jake Paul. Like, you can hate on Jake Paul all you want. You can say he hasn't fought a boxer, and he hasn't. But he's decent. He has power. And he'd absolutely destroy Nate Diaz in a boxing match. Nate Diaz... He's basically like one of those guys you see at the gas station. Not the guys, but the inflatable balloons waving around in the wind. That's how fragile he is in the octagon. And he's just walking scar tissue. He gets cut up so easily. Good boxing, good jujitsu, but he's old, guys. He's not the same Nate Diaz that we had in 2016. Let's be honest. He's really not. Next up, Vicente Luque. Vicente Luque is overrated. Bilal Muhammad is a bit underrated. So it's not all because the Bilal Muhammad loss even though I picked him to win against Bilal. But, you know, he got completely destroyed by Jeff Neal. And Vicente Luque is supposed to have this iron chin. The iron man who just walks through your shots. And he's just so dangerous. But couldn't hurt Bilal. Couldn't really hurt Jeff Neal. Gave him a war. I'll be honest, it was a great fight. But got knocked out. That chin's gone. And, you know, Michael Chiesa, that went over Michael Chiesa, is not that impressive. You know, he destroyed Tyron Woodley but got rocked in that fight I, I don't know I think he's a little bit overrated just because people were speaking of him as if he was like the dark knight of the division as if he had a chance to maybe get a title shot one day 
and he's disappointed big time. So I think people have overrated him for sure. Next up, Justin Gagey. He's just a big brawler. I'm not a fan of the guy. Justin Gagey is actually one of my least favorite UFC fighters. I really wanted Charles to destroy him, and I praise the Lord that he did because I don't like how he talks about other fighters. When guys like Nate Diaz talk shit, when guys like Connor talk shit, or even Israel Adesanya, a little bit of it is to be a showman. Justin Gagey talks shit, but he does it in a very dark way. Like, I'm pretty sure he said Connor should burn and all that. So he should burn for the things he says, but he's dead serious when he says these things. He shits on guys, calls them quitters. He was talking loads of shit against Michael Chandler, but he says it in a really dark way. And it's like, there's no showmanship to it. Um, called Oliveira a quitter. And let's be honest, guys. Michael Chandler, low IQ'd Mike, almost beat G Gagey. And Gagey is just a big brawler. Look at his wins. Cowboy. I mean, Cowboy was old when Gagey fought him. And he, people, he got like a title shot off of that, actually. <laughs> he fought Tony Ferguson. He stepped in on short notice against Tony after that win. He fought Edson Barboza. That's an okay win. That may be his best win, but let's be honest. Like, who has he really beat? James Vick, one of the worst chins of all time. He's a little bit overrated. He's a brawler. Charles Oliveira is not the best striker, but looked like a virtuoso against Justin Gagey on the feet. And I just think that if you were to put Justin Gagey against a lot of guys in that lightweight division, he gets absolutely smoked. He's gotten knocked out plenty of times. He's gotten finished by Poirier, Alvarez, Khabib, Oliveira. I think you put him up against Fizia if he gets finished in the first two rounds. You put him up against Poirier again, he gets finished. Michael Chandler almost had him out of there. He's overrated. He's just a brawler. I don't think he's that skilled. And I think if you put him up against a Dariush or a Mateus Gamrot, he gets rolled over. Speaking of Mateus Gamrot, I'm putting him at B tier. There's a lot of guys at B tier. Mateus Gamrot's overrated. People were speaking of him as if he was like a future dark horse to be a champion or some shit when he beat Armin Sarukian, but I didn't actually think that he beat Armin Sarukian. I think that, that was a little bit of a robbery. I gave that like three rounds at least to Armin, maybe even four. And that performance that he had against Benil Dariush was disappointing. He got destroyed. After the first round, he got destroyed. He got knocked down. His striking shit, I'll just say it. I, I wanna be nice to him because I like him. I like his style. I love his transitions when he's taking on high level guys in the lightweight division, but if he's not taking on the Jeremy Stevens or the guys that are predominantly strikers, he's going to have tough fights. And I feel like there's a lot of good grapplers at the top of the lightweight division who have good striking and his striking will not keep up. He reminds me of a Colby Covington, better jujitsu than Colby for sure, but with way worse striking. His striking works when it goes down to setting up a takedown, but it's not effective in and of itself. He's not hurting guys on the feet. It's very, it's very awkward it's very strange it's like very low twitch muscle fiber kind of striking and it's kind of shit i think his striking is terrible and i think he needs to work on it a lot because he's a phenomenal grappler but if he can't get a takedown he's basically fucked in every fight that he has and he's not like the best wrestler that there is so i think he's a bit overrated uh, i think fiziev probably beats him um he's a great fighter i'll give him that but i mean charles Oliveira probably beats him he just can't hang with some of these guys on the feet, and that's the issue. He was phenomenal against Armin Sarukian. Looked great, but still, he's got a great gas tank. I just think he's a little bit overrated, and it's all comes it all comes down to that striking. He's still good. Don't get me wrong. He's still a great fighter. He's going to be in the top 10 for a long time. I just don't know if he's a top 5 fighter right now, and I think people act as if he is. Next up, Gilbert Burns. Dorino, the big bad jiu-jitsu player, right? The big bad jiu-jitsu player champion jiu-jitsu you don't want to go to the ground with him he's you're fucked if you go to the ground dude if tyron woodley goes to the ground with him he's fucked imagine if burns gets wonder boy down he's fucked who has he submitted in the ufc the last submission that this guy has is in 2018 against mike davis who was a kickboxer right gilbert burns cannot for the life of him finish anyone on the ground or have any bit of a threat on the ground at welterweight he can't he doesn't finish anyone on the ground he took wonder boy down held on for dear life didn't do anything to him Bilal muhammad's not the big bad hundred thousand time jiu-jitsu champion and was able to beat the shit out of wonder boy i understand transitions 
His awareness on the ground, his ability to scramble is phenomenal. Damian Maya had his back. He just stood up a couple of times. Really impressive. Like he's got phenomenal jujitsu. I'll give him that. Really good jujitsu. But as far as how dangerous it is in MMA, it's not that dangerous. Like people don't want to go to the ground with him, I feel, because it's a little bit of a waste. But he's not. Why can't you finish, guys? If your jujitsu was so phenomenal and you were so dangerous on the ground, why would you have to go to absolute war basically every time you fight? Went to war with Kamaru. I know Kamaru's tough to take down. But come on, man. Get a submission. <laughs> I'm just... I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous. That sounds a little bit ridiculous. He doesn't have the best wrestling. People to put too much stock into the Hamza Chamaya fight. I understand that he deterred Hamza Chamaya from wrestling, but I think if Hamza took him down, he wouldn't have been in much danger. Maybe he wouldn't have had the most success, but I think he could have at least maintained top position. Burns isn't the biggest welterweight. I just have seen him roll around with Gunnar Nelson. I've seen him get down a washed up Tyron Woodley. I've seen him get down a a little bit of a washed up wonder boy when it comes to the grappling wonder boy is not the same and it's like people act like wonder boy is this tremendous submission defense but he's not a hundred time jujitsu champion you know what i mean he's a kickboxer with phenomenal kicks like why is it that close oh it's like the battle of the titans wonder boy and burns it's the battle of the titans on the ground the best submission defense ever why why does he have that good of a submission defense against gilbert burns He's overrated, straight up. He's overrated. He's got good jujitsu, not dangerous jujitsu in MMA. And he's a bit of a brawler. He's a bit of a brawler. Phenomenal performance against Hamzat Chamaya because Hamzat's really good. But I think Hamzat was seeing red. And that's not a compliment. I really think that he was just being a fool in that fight. I just think Burns is overrated. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Neil Magny beats him. I want Burns to win, but I would be surprised if he submits him. That's for sure. Like, RDA submitted Neil Magny. I mean, I just... Shavkat submitted him. Will Burns be able to? I don't know. I don't know. He's got good awareness, but I just... I don't like how people speak of him as if he's, like, this dangerous mo motherfucker on the ground. Like, he's really not. Brian Ortega, I'll put him at the B tier, just because he's super highly ranked. And he's still in the top five. I don't even know how he is. His last win was over the Korean Zombie. That was in 2020. Halloween around that time that was a while ago and the Korean zombie even back then was old and before that you know he's beating Clay Guida Frankie Edgar that's a decent win Frankie Edgar I'll give him that impressive but with these featherweights that are in the rankings right now I don't think he stands a chance against many of them like I think he gets smoked by Arnold Allen I think he gets smoked by Ilya Tapiria Yair Rodriguez Looked like he was lighting him up like a Christmas tree, even though I picked Brian to win that fight because I thought, you know, Brian's so tough, he'll be able to submit him and find some kind of a scramble in the later rounds. He's very dangerous, for sure. But, like, I just think he's overrated, man. I just think he's overrated. His wrestling is dog shit. He has a hard time taking people down, and I feel like if he improved his wrestling, he would be way more dangerous because he is good on the ground. Um, but, like, why is he so highly ranked when he barely even has a... He doesn't even have a win in the last couple of years, so come on. Next up, Max Holloway. I'll put him at the C tier. I think he's a tad bit overrated just because he gets hit so much, so much. He has such terrible boxing defense. And if even if I were to make a boxing tier list, he'd be high up. But his defense is so bad, I couldn't put him that high up. He gets hit too much. He relies on his toughness a little bit. And it's remarkable that he doesn't have that much power. I mean, like, if he had power, he'd be unstoppable. But... He could barely touch Volkanovski in that last fight. I think Brian Ortega touched Volkanovski more in his fight with him than Max Holloway did in the trilogy. So I, I like Max. He's phenomenal. He's one of the best featherweights of all time. The third best featherweight ever. He's really good. I just think he gets hit a lot and people don't really look at that enough. Like he's taken more damage than anyone's ever taken in the UFC. And that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. Next up, Marvin Mediocre Vittori. I'm going to put him at B tier because people are starting to come around to this. It really pissed me off when people were giving him a chance to beat Robert Whitaker. People were saying, bro, I just think he's got like good cardio. He's got a good gas tank. And I think we'll be able to pressure him up against the fence and just like, do you know who you're speaking about? You're speaking about Robert Whitaker, who's phenomenal when he's going back, when he's on his back foot. He's so dangerous on his back foot. He's such a great striker. He's quick. He's lightning fast. And you're giving Marvin Mediocre Vittori a chance. 
Marvin Vittori got like right into a big main event right after a win over like Carl Harrison or whatever that guy's name is. Carl Robinson. I don't remember his name, but he submitted this guy. You know, he had the screaming incident in the hallway and then he fought um, Kevin Holland, who stepped in on short notice, I think. And he beat Kevin Holland, but laid on him for five rounds. This is Kevin Holland, man. He's on this list too. Kevin Holland's on this list. I'll put him at B tier. Fuck it. I'll put him at A tier. I think he's super overrated. Barely did anything to Kevin Holland. Come on. Who's got a grappling weakness? I know he's got a decent jujitsu, but come on, guys. What are you doing, Marvin? And he's so dog shit. He looks so bad against Robert Whitaker. He looked like he was a bum who had never fought a day in his life after that first round. Second round, third round, he looked helpless. And people picked him to win? People picking him to win is enough for me to get him in the B tier. You don't pick him to beat Robert Whitaker. Enough. Paulo Costa, I think, is one of the most overrated fighters in the UFC. I'll put him at the S tier. Let me explain Costa. He has no wins over anyone that's even in the UFC right now. His fight against Yoel Romero was a one-off. I don't know what happened that night for Paulo Costa to look so good when he's looked so shit after. I mean, he beat Johnny Hendricks, old washed up old man Hendricks. He beat Uriah, old washed up old man Hall. And then he had this like amazing performance against Yoel Romero where he arguably lost, but still that's Yoel Romero. And he didn't, he dropped him like, First of all, he has T-Rex arms and he doesn't have as much power as people say. Like, when's the last time he really hurt anyone or dropped anyone? People speak of him as if he has like this tremendous power. And, oh, if he if he if he hits you, it's oh, it's dangerous. Like, he needs like a 20 punch combination to put you on your ass. He couldn't fuck with Marvin Mediocre Vittori. Right? He couldn't fuck with Marvin Mediocre Vittori. He got destroyed by Israel Adesanya. Look at Jared Cannonier's fight against Israel Adesanya. I know this was Gyno Sanya too when he fought Paulo, but nonetheless, look at Marvin's fight with Izzy. Look at everyone else's fights with Izzy. Izzy makes it real close, real snug and sound, leg kicking at range. But when Paulo Costa was in there, Paulo Costa looked like dog shit. And he fought Rockhold, and even an old man, no chin, Luke Rockhold took the best shots from Paulo Costa. If that doesn't tell you that his power is overrated, I don't know what does. Hey, I'm filming something right now. And other than that, I mean, and not only that, but Rockhold, despite losing, looked a lot better, looked a lot more crisp. Paulo Costa is the only guy to win and look way more shitty than his opponent. So Costa, you're super overrated and people were picking yeah, Jacob Ross you were picking this guy to maybe give Whitaker a tough fight I'm not seeing it and other people I see guys saying that Paulo Costa is a tough fight for Hamzat I'm like how how I know he's got strong takedown defense I know he's big I know he's massive but let's be honest just because you're big doesn't mean you're like this wizard on the ground like he can be taken down straight up he can be taken down Rockhold tried to take him down. Rockhold's not a hundredth of the wrestler that Hamza Chemaev is. He's not a one in two hundredth of the wrestler that Hamza Chemaev is. Hamza Chemaev would strangle him in one round. And even if it was on the feet, I'm sorry, but you're getting beat up by Marvin Mediocre Vittori on the feet. Hamza smokes you. Robert Whitaker. If Robert Whitaker fought Paulo Costa, that is Marvin Vittori part two. But I actually think I actually think Whitaker finishes him. He's relatively tough, but he still can get KO'd by. Izzy pillow, pillow Hands Hadassan. He's not Pillow Hands, but um, AJ McKee. This is basically a slight to Big John McCarthy and Josh Thompson, who speak of these Bellator fighters like they're on the same level as the UFC fighters. AJ McKee is nowhere near the same level as any of these other guys. I remember John McCarthy and Josh Thompson saying he could give Volkanovski a tough fight. Dude, stop. Even he overrated himself. AJ McKee overrated himself and gave him a chance against Volk. And then he looked like dog shit in his last couple performances. He's in Bellator. Bellator is not nearly as good as the UFC. He's super overrated. Also, Kevin Holland. I want to discuss Kevin Holland. I'm going to discuss Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland. People were really giving this guy a massive chance against Wonderboy. I picked him to beat Wonderboy and I was dead wrong. I overrated him. Even I overrated him. Okay. That's why he's so overrated too. Because Kevin Holland has disappointed me. I thought that this was the next baddest dude when it comes to the stand-up in the welterweight division. I thought that he was like the, the coldest dude ever. 
sure he smoked some guy this summer. I forgot what his name was. Like Jailbird, I think his name, his nickname is like something Birdie. Bad Birdie or something. I don't know. But he smoked some guy, knocked him down, pieced him up, and I think he submitted him. And he also had a sick submission in the beginning of the year over Cowboy Oliveira. But his striking, he got destroyed and demolished by a 40-year-old. I'm just saying he's not the baddest. Wonder Boy is one of the best strikers ever. So Kevin Holland's still good. But outside of the striking, he's dog shit in the wrestling. He gets destroyed. He gets taken down and controlled for five rounds by Brunson and Marvin Mediocre Vittori. And he got made to look like a little five-year-old against Hamza Jamayev. I mean, I think that a five-year-old could give me a tougher fight than he gave Hamza Jamayev. That's how good Hamza is. That's how mediocre his grappling defense is. I mean, he looked like a gazelle up against a giant saber-toothed tiger. But nonetheless, I just thought he was like going to be the new guy on the block with the baddest striking, like a long reach in his prime, 30s, big power, fast on the feet. After that first round, he was a sitting duck. And I just, I mean, you look at him like, who's he beat that's ranked? He hasn't really beat anyone that's any good that's even ranked in the first place. So I think that we were all overrating him a little bit. Next up. Darren the left hand till snapping front Darren is literally just a left hand okay and he's super overrated I know that a lot of people these days think he's dog shit and I agree because he's so basic basic and one dimensional and all he does is throw a left hand he's got awful takedown defense terrible grappling he doesn't even come in shape in his fights anymore his performance against Wonder Boy back in the day was special, and I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again. His performance against Gaslam, like barely scraping by a striking match with Calvin Gaslam, I don't know. I think he should have done better. But anyway, he's a left hand, and I thought his striking was going to be better than that. I thought that, fuck, he's taken such a long layoff. I think he'll at least be able to come back and throw a kick or, a, or two, a couple kicks. Maybe throw your lead hand for once, throw your right hand throw a jab nothing he's only a left hand he's a walking left hand and i can't even rate him as a legitimately i can't even rate him as a human anymore i mean he's not even a guy in the octagon he's not even a person in the octagon he's literally just a big left hand coming at you like that when you're only a left hand how could i not include you on the list because people still speak of him as darren till i call him the left hand so the left hand is super overrated. Darren Till... <sighs> Darren Till would be... I mean, come on, guys. I just think that if you're literally only a left hand, how could I not have you on this list? Because people still speak of him as if he's like a person. Of course he is. Like, if we're speaking about him from a human rights standpoint, but he's only a left hand in the octagon, and I can't rate that that highly. Sean Brady. <sighs> B-tier. Dude. I'm so happy Bilal Muhammad beat him and I picked Bilal to beat him because he has some of the most, he is so bad on the feet. He got pieced up by Michael Chiesa, who's one of the worst strikers at welterweight. Pieced up, gassed out after just holding him down and doing nothing. This guy has like crazy jujitsu skills apparently, but shit wrestling. Even when he does take you down, he just controls you and does nothing with it unless you're the first can to be introduced to him in the UFC in his debut. Like, unless you're the first or second opponent he'll ever have in the UFC, you can basically not get finished by him on the ground. Sure, he's strong. And he was saying, you know, I can't wait till Bilal knows this boy's hips don't move. But you didn't even take him down once. And Bilal Muhammad pieced you up. And Bilal Muhammad finished you. So if Bilal, remember the name Muhammad, can actually get a finish over you and not a decision, when people are thinking you're going to be that next dude in the division, you're overrated. Next up, Anthony Smith. Not many people really overrate him, so I'm not going to put him that high, but he overrates himself. Going into fights with like Magomed and Goliath, he'll say things like, not even King Kong himself could take me out. Michael, I don't, I don't care what he's doing. He's not just going to walk me down and beat me up. Like us guys in the rankings, we're not just going to let that happen. And he let that happen. He got destroyed. His legs got destroyed. And he chalked it up to some fluke injury, which was not the case. He got destroyed by Alexander Rakic. And I think Alexander Rakic is a bit overrated. Dude, he loses to everyone that's in the top five. So I got to put him in there. He's not that great. And he treats himself as if he's like right up there with the boys. 
right up there with the top three. Like, you're not one of the boys yet. All right, you got to win more. Next up, Valentina Shevchenko, I think, is also one of the most overrated fighters in the UFC because people call her, like, the most skilled fighter, and she's on a nine-fight win streak, and she's got, like, six title defenses. So leave it up to someone in one of those divisions to have a three-fight win streak and then get a title shot. Who's her competition? That's the thing. You're only as good as your competition, and when your competition's dog shit, you don't really have to improve that much. You have no one to test you. Her competition's nowhere to be found and she's not that good like i understand that people think she's like this crazy badass and all that stuff but let's be honest like i wouldn't even put her in my top 25 most skilled in the ufc she's got average bantamweight skills she's got average featherweight skills next up tricky pitbull super overrated got beat by 23 year old umar Nurmagomedov. The Nurmagomedovs are good and Umar is a crazy prospect, but let's be honest, he's 23 years old and you're this big bad champion in Bellator. You can't even give a 23 year old a tough fight. Like, pfft. this ain't the day of John Jones when a 23 year old can just come in off the couch and destroy you, right? Like, you've been training for way longer than them and you still lost. You're not that good. Next up, John Jones, A tier. I think John Jones is overrated. I really do. Jacob Ross, I really think he doesn't have a chance to beat. <laughs> Francis Ngannou, and I think he probably gets smoked by a lot of heavyweights. He's only as good as his last fight. And it's the same thing that I said about Conor and Nate Diaz. People speak of him as if he's the same guy that was fighting in the red shorts against Daniel Cormier, that was fighting with the beard against DC or Gustafson. Though that guy that finished Shogun and finished Glover Teixeira, he's different. He's straight up different. His last great performance was against Gustafson and Anthony Smith, but he had a razor close fight with Thiago Santos and he lost his last fight against Dominic Reyes. And that in retrospect is not looking so good. Dominic Reyes has been KO'd three times after that. And John Jones lost to him. His next fight, he got KO'd in the second round and beat in the first round too. His next fight, he got KO'd by Yuri and then he got KO'd by one punch by Ryan Spann. John Jones lost to him. That's not a good look on you when you're not even finishing that guy and you're literally losing. So he's got no power at light heavyweight. How is he going to destroy a guy like Francis Ngannou? He doesn't have the striking of a Cyril Gan. He's not fast twitch anymore. He's losing his speed a little bit. He looks a lot more stiff. He looks a lot slower, more stuck in the mud that he did earlier on in his career. Sure, his grappling is fantastic, but I don't think he's going to be able to just take Francis Ngannou down who's stuff takedowns from Stipe. Francis Ngannou was stuffing takedowns from Stipe. I mean, he's knocked out wrestlers like Curtis Blades. John Jones isn't going to be able to take him down. He's not a natural heavyweight. He hasn't, like, he can build himself up all he wants. He can lift all the weights that he wants. It's not going to be conducive to having a heavyweight skill set. I just think he's going to be a big, bulky heavyweight who's slower and stiffer than the other guys because he's not used to carrying around that weight. He's not a natural heavyweight. He's like Izzy, but for the light heavyweight class. And no power. I think guys are going to be able to walk him down and KO him. I think Francis is going to be able to KO him. Good luck taking Francis down, who's just an absolute freak. But people think of John Jones as if he's just going to go into heavyweight and smoke everyone. They'll call you a casual if you pick Francis and Ganu to destroy him. You know what I mean? They'll call you a casual if you pick Cyril Gan to beat him. I just think he loses to like quite a few guys at the heavyweight division. Cyril Gan, I might pick him to beat Jones. I would pick... Nganu to beat Jones. If Stipe fought Jones two years ago, I'd pick Stipe to win. I'd pick a lot of these guys, maybe even Tom Haspinall. But that's also because I just don't think he presents that much of a threat. I just think he's overrated. And people speak like, dude, John Jones, you just said he couldn't win in heavyweight. You're a fucking casual. I'm not. I'm just looking at his last fight. And this is the 2023 rankings, tier list, most overrated. We're not looking at John Jones' whole career. We're not looking at the John Jones of 2014. We're looking at the John Jones of today, who's coming off of a loss, in my opinion, who doesn't have power in the light heavyweight division, who got his takedown stuffed by Dominic Reyes, T-Rex Arms Reyes, and we're talking about his chances against Francis the freaking Ganu. Like, good luck. So this is my overrated list. I think Paulo and Valentina is overrated. I think John Jones is in the A tier. Darren Till, the left hand. He's not even a person. He's literally a left hand. People know he's not that good anymore, but he's so overrated and so bad that he's literally just a left hand in reality. And people think he's like got decent striking. He's only a left hand. Yeah, this is the list, man. Until next time, guys. Take it easy.
and please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Mass moves mass, and it would only make sense that eating balls is good for the balls. That's right, whole package from Heart and Soil Supplement is packed with New Zealand grass-fed testicle and grass-fed liver, and it packs quite the punch. It'll boost your energy, it's good for your health. Make the investment, click the link in my description to get some whole package Heart and Soil Supplements. Get your beef testicles today.